All right, hello everybody, Peter here. Today, we're gonna take this piece of linoleum. I think it's called gray, or some people call it battleship no, no, linoleum. And as you can see, it's got like fabric on the back of it. You can you hear it too, and hear it. And um, I'm gonna take this, and then I'm gonna take these uh, knives I've got here little set of uh, power grip knives. I'm gonna take these, pop the little rubber caps off of there and dig, kind of carve and dig a design into this, right? That's the general idea. And then I've got two other uh, tools. I've got the, got the squidger and the squelcher. I'm gonna use these to, uh, first of all, apply ink across it and then Use this to press a piece of paper down onto it, doing the process known as printmaking. And let's see how it goes. I've tried it once or twice before, um, but every time I try it, I change things a little bit. Whether it's the, you know, the the pro, the, the I kind of talk the material I'm cutting. In this case, linoleum. So it's a lino cut or lino cut. I don't know how to say. It. I've never heard anyone else say it out loud in my life because I just read tutorials on the internet and they don't say it out loud because I don't watch the YouTube videos because I hate watching YouTube videos. Who likes those? I just read the, the wiki house or, or I change something like the tools I'm using or the ink I'm using. So today we have another combination. Let's get started. Oh, also this is the ink I'm using. Speedball Professional Super Graphic Black by Bill Fick. That's what I used last time, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think it works good. Here is the folded laminated steel power grip Japanese imported gouge that I'll be using to carve most of this. First thing I did was water down some acrylic paint, stir it up, mix it up, and painted it onto my piece of linoleum. This way, when I started carving away the linoleum, uh, it would be more evident, more apparent, and easier to see the progress I was making. Now, after I did this, I kind of sketched out a little design with a pencil on top of the paint, and I think I might have maybe sketched out this design underneath the paint, because as I was working, I was kind of wiping away my pencil drawing with my hand, but it was all right, and I also cured the paint with a little, a little heat gun there. I sketched in a design, it all went well, and I felt like I was doing really good, and I think I was. I was having a good time. And then the carving began. For this part of the carving, I was using kind of a very shallow U-shaped gouge. Uh, it feels great. It feels very satisfying. I think there are a lot of other very specialized tools you can use when you really get into the printmaking for, you know, maybe something to, to hold what you're carving down on the desk, maybe a little clamp or something to push it against. The main thing I was holding in my mind, the main thought in my mind was to Never push the gouge, never push my sharp tools, my sharp tools towards any part of my body. You know, I didn't want to come out of this with a partially red print. You know, I didn't, I didn't wake up planning on shedding my own blood today. And thankfully that didn't happen. So you guys can all rest easy. I came out of this thing totally unscathed somehow with all the reckless carving I've done here and other projects, I've never cut myself. And then, you know, just like with all the crazy, all the wood burning and pyrography I've done, somehow I've never burned myself. And I don't feel like I'm really that careful, even though I should be. Uh, and I am pretty accident prone in like other areas of my life that aren't art. When I think about art, I don't, I don't in the back of my mind want to be thinking about pain at the same time. Well, I guess I do all, anyways, but I mean, that's, that's probably one of my inspirations for art. But you know what I mean. It's not the same. But it's working well. This was working a lot better than the first time I tried uh, carving some linoleum. Well, I just noticed a part of the video there where I car carved toward myself. But I was being careful. The last time I was using some other tools that I found out were actually wood carving tools. And they just weren't working that well. I even... Uh, would sometimes, you know, I had different tips from different people, you know, like I have like a little leather strop with some different compounds for sharpening the tools. I even had my, my heat gun there. I would heat up the linoleum sometimes to make it softer and smoother, uh, easier to cut through. But all in all, I didn't really have to do any of that. I just kind of went at it with this power grip tool 
and uh, it worked great. And it was, there's something very kind of satisfying about it. If you just sit there, start carving, you can really get into a kind of like a meditative state. You know, if you've got some music going that you like or something, however you work best. Some people work best with music. Some people work best in silence. Some people work best, you know, if they're listening to a podcast or they have someone to talk to at the same time. Maybe they just like birds chirping or the white noise of the air conditioner in the background. Hey, do what you got to do. Try to get into like a little comfortable environment where you can just kind of zone out and don't have too many things that distract you. The things that distract you might work as great enhancers for other people. So don't, you know, just figure out what works good for you. Anyways, so this is very satisfying, this carving part. Uh, I kind of, I'll say the, some of the lines didn't get as like crisp and sharp as I wanted. Maybe it's, maybe I need to do like a bigger piece. Like I look at all these wood, maybe, maybe that some of the carvings and prints I've seen from like other people that inspire me throughout the ages, you know, people that are long dead, I think probably they maybe have been like copper plate etchings or wood cuts, right? So maybe the wood, those lines and, uh, I don't know, something just seemed more crisp about it. And this, I mean, this seemed crisp, but I, I feel like there was a very, there was a limit to the, how small I could make the lines. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, it turned out okay. Everything was fine. I think by the time I was about done carving the print itself, I was pretty happy just to look at the linoleum and it, it looked cool. You know, the flat black of the part I hadn't carved and then the cool textures of everything as I carved away, uh, the background, you know, there's kind of like a bit of a hatching to it. And then I went ahead and after I felt like the, the design itself was done, I tried to cut away as, as, much of the, as much of the excess material as possible from the outside so that I wouldn't be, uh, as I rolled on the ink to the, to the raised areas, it wouldn't, you know, touch the stuff in the background and less, less stuff for ink to get caught on. I don't really know how to describe it. And then I sanded the surface with a piece of sandpaper to kind of get some of the paint off that I had put on there. I got my ink out, put it on a piece of plexiglass, rolled it around, and at first I put way too much ink on this piece of plexiglass I was using as a little, um, little spot to spread around my ink. Way too much. But I mean, that's how you learn. That's why I just wanted to make some prints. And this is the kind of thing where maybe I could have looked it up, watched a video, you know, figure out, you know, exactly, you know, you know, one tablespoon of ink or something, but I feel, feel, I don't know. I just like trying it out and doing it for myself and learning from a little bit of, you know, guess and check, trial and error sort of thing, which sometimes ends up with me getting discouraged and not going forward with it anymore. But sometimes when I do keep going and it's something I feel like I want to keep doing, I feel like I learn it even better that way. Then I applied it to the stamp. Tried not to get it on my fingers or anything. I just had some scrap paper in the background. Then I got my printmaking paper out, Strathmore, five by seven inches, and just kind of took it and just kind of plopped it down right on top of there. And the first one I did, I had gummed up so much ink on there that it, the piece of paper slid around a little bit. Uh, so trial and error. That's where the trial and error comes in. This, uh, that was the point when I knew for sure. I mean, I had had a hunch before, but this, that's the point when I knew for sure that I had way too much ink on there. But how else? You, I mean, it was a, I guess I could have scraped some ink off of my little roller pad over there. It looked all right. I mean, look at that. It's fine. I mean, better than nothing. I mean, it should just be a piece of blank paper. And now I made it a not blank piece of paper. My own little design on it. So with my second application, it was still too much ink. But by the time I got around to like my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, I did 15 prints, all right? And I, I would kind of go through a, a roller coaster of having too little to too much ink. And I guess you kind of just get a feel for it of how much you know ink to add back to your little roller spot there to keep it at the right, the right amount of ink to apply to the linoleum to, you know, press up the paper onto it and then it looks good and it kind of looks even a little bit better yeah so I did 15 prints and and that's when like the whole big question of printmaking came to me again and I just didn't know here's the question is why make prints I guess it's so you can give them away and then I thought maybe I should have been making these on folded pieces of paper big nice thick folded like greeting card sized things then I could have at least used them as greeting cards right that would have been cool 
but maybe for next time. So I just do, took the tray out of my oven, stacked all of them in there, let them dry, and uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. They did take a while to dry, and I left the lid off of my ink too. Uh, hopefully it's still good for next time. I might go ahead and order another bucket of ink just, just in case it went bad because I left the lid off for like a, two days. Pretty fun little... Pretty fun little experience there. A little experiment experience. Not sure what or why it is, but it is.